today we're going to talk about mistake number nine, not seeking professional help when you're talking about your finances. We get our advice from every Tom, Dick, and Harry, our son-in-laws, our sons, our cousins, our brothers, our brother-in-laws. Everybody is free with their advice on what you should do with your finances or not do with your finances. But sometimes we need professional and financial advice. Now, I know you're going to say, well, I can't afford that. I can't afford to pay. But you know, there's lots of free financial advice that's out there. If you go to your bank, your bank will often have a financial advisor that they offer for free for people to come and talk to. Or your insurance agent might have uh, financial advice that they can help you with. Whatever you do, seek out the right people. Maybe even your lawyer can give you some good advice. But don't try and do everything based on what other people say who aren't trained in those areas. So I'm going to give you some good uh, little bit of advice off of this uh, articles that I have in my guide. Uh, and uh, it's a bit busy, so I'm going to try and go through it. For, number one, it's very important that you update your will, that you update uh, all of where your finances are, what you have available, where everything is, what your passwords are. You don't have a spouse there to, to know where everything is. If something should happen to you, your family members, whoever's your executor, they should know everything about your financial and legal documents. Number two is don't rush to make any major money decisions. If you've got your money somewhere, uh, here's a perfect example. Donnie, when Donnie died, he was only 53. So his pension plan, I had a choice to either leave it there and start drawing from it. Uh, I was only 50. Or I could take it out and I could invest it and manage it myself. This was a hard decision. And part of the reason uh, why is because if I chose to keep his pension in his company pension plan, it died with me. And I had this, Donnie had died suddenly at 53. I had this fear of dying by accident or illness suddenly also. And that all of Donnie's money would be left in the pension plan and the children would not get anything because it only goes to spouses. It was hard though because I'm not a financial person. So to manage this money myself was a big undertaking. I needed some advice on which would be the best decision for me. And I did get some advice, but in hindsight, I got advice uh, in only one area. And I think I would have done better if I had gotten a couple of different uh, professional opinions. A third one is to be aware of financial wolves that prey on widows. There's going to be all kinds of people around that once they find out you've gotten some insurance money or that your house is paid off or that you have a little bit of cash, they might be financially interested in your well-being all of a sudden. They're around, they're helpful, they're doing things for you and they want you to sell the house and move in with them and maybe build a granny suite. All these are really good, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's in your best interest. Watch out for the people that are looking after their own best interests. Number four tip is make a house decision wisely. We've talked about this before, but it bears repeating. Uh, your house is often your most biggest financial investment. So do not make any rash decisions about your home without really thinking about the financial consequences of that. You know, you could sell your home, yes, and you could have some extra cash, but you'd be surprised how fast that cash could go through. And then you might be living somewhere uh, where you can't afford it anymore, and then you have to downsize and not as planned. So 
be careful about your house choices. Also, don't be a purse for others. What I mean is, don't be quick to hand out cash here or there to family members, grandchildren, children, because you have it. That, you may think, well, it's not a big deal to give them a, you know, a couple hundred here or a thousand there, or to help them buy a new car because you've got that money. You may have a long life ahead of you, and in the end, will they help you out financially if you run out of money? Be careful. If you've got money at the time of your death, then you can be their purse, but not where you're still living. You don't know what your own expenses are going to be. Lastly, be in control. If you have money troubles, acknowledge them. Hiding from them isn't going to help you. Write down all your debts. Write down exactly what you owe, the interest rates on them. Go talk to the credit cards and see if you can get the interest rates down. Talk to a financial advisor about putting the loans and the things together, if that might help you. You will not get anywhere if you hide from your troubles. So take the time to put it all together and then go seek some professional advice on that. I hope this has helped. Please subscribe to the channel and next time we'll talk about mistake number 10, not looking after your own health. Bye-bye.